All right, so guys, this right here is an interesting laptop, okay? It is the Gateway NV52. It is the oldest AMD laptop that can run Windows 11. Well, technically, it's not the oldest laptop. It's just the old, the processor in it is one of the oldest, okay, that can run it. It's part of a generation. So basically, this laptop is slow as heck, okay? It has caused me infinite amounts of pain, okay? I'm not even joking. I seriously now legitimately almost hate this laptop now because it is just so freaking slow okay and it just caused me so much pain because of compatibility errors or not being able to run certain things so join me for a world of suffering Alright guys, so here we have the laptop, alright? Now I might be wondering, why do I, why do I just turn it on? Well, that's because I'm afraid that when I turn this thing off and on again, it's gonna like corrupt into some one billion different ways or whatever. Alright, let's go ahead and uh, talk about the features of this laptop. So, first off, it features decent speakers, although I can't really test them because um, I sort of, um, I broke the speaker while, while opening this up. This is the second laptop I have ever opened up, ever. It's also one of the first old-style laptops I opened up ever. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's pretty obvious why. Another feature of this laptop is the webcam. Let me go ahead and just move it up. This right here is a 640x480 webcam. It is garbage, okay? Like, I mean, the quality, it is horrible, okay? <laughs> yeah, let's just say that you don't want to be recording anything on this webcam. Oh, and also, um, uh, this features a very, very cool touch bar, which... You know, pretty cool. It's touch sensitive. I mean, that's what a touch bar is. So, uh, yeah, mo a lot of Vista laptops from this era, you know, had this. So, yeah. Oh, also, another feature, very most, very important. It has HDMI, which means that I can screen capture it. As you can see here, I have the $500 modern HP laptop screen capturing this. So, uh, yeah. Um, uh, you can already tell it has an Athlon next to it just by the stickers. These are the stickers, by the way, which, uh, yeah. Oh, and also, another feature of this laptop, the screen! It's a 1366 by 768 TFT panel, so it's better than TN. It's not great, though. It's 60 hertz, so it's not the best, but it gets the job done, alright? Although, there are some lines, in certain colors, there's, like, little lines that, like, slowly move across. Very weird. I think it's just this display is fault though. <laughs> yeah. Oh, also, it fe features this very circular button, power button thing, because, you know, fancy. I mean, this thing, literally, if I go ahead and close it, um, uh, well, I can't close it right now, because, you know, I'm afraid. Okay, let's go ahead and pray that it doesn't die here. Gonna... As you can see here, it's almost got, like, a race car aesthetic, you know? It's very, very fancy, you know? Even though it isn't. It's also got this nice, um, let me go ahead and show you here, it's got this nice pattern as you can see. So, back in the day, this Vista laptop would have been pretty decent. Oh, I, I did have to black that out there. So, uh, yeah. Also, the benchmarks will be, um, uh, the gaming benchmarks anyways, will be, you know, more relevant games that, you know, people actually heard of, unlike, you know, like games like Muck or like Nessus, which, you know, not many people have heard of. Although, I might b return, bring them back in the future, but who knows. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and see how this thing does in the general benchmarks. Actually, let's go and get on with the specs first, alright? Alright, so this Gateway NV52 sports 4 gigs of DDR2 667 megahertz dual channel RAM, so 2 2 gig sticks, which, it's alright. I mean, 4 gigs of RAM isn't really usable at all from Windows 11, but I mean, hey, it's something. It's better than 2. In terms of CPU-wise, we have the AMD Athlon 64X2 QL-6 port, which is infamous on this channel for being a slow piece of crap, slower than almost as slow as a Pentium 4, running at 2.1 GHz with no boost clock, with only two cores and a pathetic two threads, which, yeah, as you guys know, it's not very usable. 256 gig, gigabyte SATA 3 SSD means that no bench, no bottlenecks at all in the benchmarks. And GPU-wise, we have the ATI Mobility Radeon HD 3200i GP, which is infamous on this channel for being slow as heck. It is slower than the GT210, which, if you guys know what that card is, that thing is, um, uh, it's, it's something, <laughs> let's just say that. Yeah, honestly, this, this computer is just, it is all sorts of outdated and slow, but hey, it's, it's old, alright. 
Anyways, on to the general usage benchmark. Alright, so here we have the general usage benchmarks, and as you can see here, I've been loading YouTube for the past 5 minutes and it still refuses to load. Now is it RAM? Should not be. YouTube is fine with 4 gigs of RAM. <coughs> yeah, this is on um, my... Uh, this is quite hilarious. <laughs> oh yeah, it's, it's struggling. I can't even click on it. This is... This is abysmal. This is slower than, um, uh... Wait, is it finally done? Okay, let's see how long it takes to load the Muya AK video. Yeah, this is, um, slower than the EPC, almost. <laughs> almost. I mean, I guess, what do I expect? This thing is only, what, like, three times faster than the EPC? And that might sound impressive, but... You guys know how well the EPC performs. Ooh! Wait, wait, wait. We might be actually into a video here. Come on! Load! Yeah, this thing is not usable for general usage. It is abysmal. Yeah, the CPU is just floored. CPU degrees, which is down here, in case if anyone's wondering, um, is well over 80. Almost 85. I mean, it's literally just loading YouTube. It's not even playing a game here, it's just loading YouTube. <laughs> this is honestly, genuinely hilarious. It's just, it's just so abysmally slow. Look at the memory usage, it's like, almost maxed out. Everything is maxed out except for the SSD. In fact, the Wi-Fi is, look how slow it is. Oh man, this is just, this is hilarious. This is, this is abysmal. Yeah, something tells me this isn't gonna load. Okay, well look here, sometimes it does load. Very rarely though. So, uh, yeah, in terms of general usage, this is what you're expecting, okay? Maybe you can browse the web, but yeah, this thing, this thing is not much more powerful than the Pentium 4. Alright. Okay, let's see here. Will it actually load in? Also, by the way, this is without Windows updates, with security turned off. As you can see here, it's in 480p. <laughs> I've never seen this message from YouTube before. That is just how slow it is. As you can see here, even virus protection is turned off. This is just how it runs. Wow, 480p here. 480p, and it's struggling really badly. Yeah, yeah, um... Last time I tested this out on the channel, it it did all right. I mean, well, I mean by all right, I mean I meant it did like horribly, like 360p. Um, yeah, this is this is abysmal. This is genuinely unwatchable. Like, look at the lag. Okay, what happens if I try and set it to like, I don't know, 240p? 240p is not watchable. Okay, by literally 90% of people's standards. But who knows? Maybe it is on this one. This is probably the best we can do on this crappy old Vista laptop. Oh! Oh, it's lagging. It's definitely dropping some frames, but it's actually usable now. That's crazy. Okay, what happens if I try and step it up to the netbook resolution? That the netbook was able to play at, which is what, which is what, 360p? That was what it was? Let's see here. 360p may be a little too much. Okay, it can do 360p. Alright, so 360p is its max. Um, 480 is just way, way too intensive for this old little Athlon X2. Yeah, it's still dropping frames. Ooh, ooh, ooh! Okay, so this is... This is literally almost worse than the netbook did. <laughs> yeah, this is honestly kind of hilarious. Uh, let's just go ahead and close it out. Yeah, unfortunately, um, uh... Yeah, I will have to actually point this out. Oh, crap. Alright, but, uh, yeah. This thing cannot do general usage at all, okay? It is horrible. Let's go ahead and just open up CPU-Z here just to laugh at its terrible result. CPU idle... The CPU does not idle below 10%. Here it is. It's got... It's got 44 watts of max TDP. That is crazy. No wonder why this thing overheats. Okay, let's stress it. Yay, 120 points. By the way, just for reference, let's go and test out, I don't know, the Core, core 2 Duo E8500. One of the faster Core 2 Duos. Yeah, it's, um, it's definitely a lot slower. As you can see here, we have our ATI Radeon HD 34, 32 inch graphics. By the way, this is in dual channel, by the way. It's not saying it, but it is in dual channel, alright? So, uh, yeah. Honestly, this is, this is quite sad for this laptop. <laughs> I'm honestly gonna probably laugh at the gaming benchmarks, because, I mean, the CPU is gonna be holding it back, not the GPU. Even though this iGPU is about as slower than the GT210. 
So, uh, yeah, guys. Anyways, let's go ahead and get on with the gaming benchmarks as well. That's what you guys are here for, right? Anyways, let's get on with the gaming benchmarks. Shall we? Starting off right in the deep end here, we have Beam and G Drive, which I am genuinely shocked that this game even launched with a few <coughs> hiccups. There was a swarm of warnings and errors telling me that this crappy laptop will not run this game, or won't run it well, or warning, your laptop is too slow. <laughs> and all it did was just slow down laptop. So please, shut up EVNG, like, we get it how this GPU has only 64 megabytes of VRAM, or this P PC only has 2 cores, or this PC only has 4 gigabytes of RAM. I think BMG does not like this laptop, guys. <laughs> I had to manually open the game, as the game would not launch in the full 64 mode normally, so this was about as jank as it would get. After turning every down to the lowest settings at 640x480, I legit prayed the game would load the basic grid map, and after loading in for what felt like an eternity, it actually got a frame rate. That frame rate being a whopping 13 FPS on average and 1% lows of 10 when smoke was generated. Overall, BMG was a solid fail, and was a waste of time of getting working. Next up, we have, with a new benchmark, we have the OG Skyrim, running at the lowest settings at 800 by 600 It is not playable. At all. The input lag is crazy bad, and the visuals are, well, just awful. Even with these major compromises, the game runs, well, like, shite. Averages of 12 and 1% levels of 7 meant that this game is not playable at all, even with lower expectations. Any open areas or fancy effects could slow down or crash this laptop, and maybe even cause a BSOD. But hey, it opened a game that has 3 years new in it, so we have to give it that at least. Overall, Skyrim barely launches and runs. It is a solid fail, like holy crap, I've never seen Skyrim run this crap. We have the latest version of Minecraft Java Edition here, running at 1366 by 768 with the lowest possible settings as well. I am shocked the game even launched. Although, that is as far as it got about. The game would crash occasionally, and walking or doing anything in the game would, in general, either freeze the game temporarily, or just straight up crash it. Averages of 3 FPS, and 1% lows down to 0 0.3, which is the lowest 1% lows ever recorded on this channel, breaking a record against its old self-running Minecraft 7 months ago. That is genuinely hilarious. This is, this is just absolute nuts. Minecraft ran better than this laptop before, but updates may have not played well. Minecraft is a failure, and can occasionally even make the laptop die or melt due to high temps. So yeah, that's a nice additional bonus. On to the next benchmark. Next up, we have Crisis. Now honestly, I was expecting this laptop to do better than this, as this is a game from the laptop's era, but oh well, the game runs like crap. Who could have guessed? Crisis running at 800 by 600 with the lowest settings, and we are still not seeing a playable FPS. Averages of 28 and 1% lose down to 14 due to stutters caused by low VRAM, CPU power, GPU power, RAM, and in fact just about everything was struggling. Crisis is a failure. You need more FPS for a shooter game. But hey, it got higher than 15 FPS, so it's gonna go uphill from here, right? Hopefully, please? Oh, well, no. We have Gary's Mod here, which came out three years before this laptop, and it still runs like crap. The game is set to 1366 by 768 with the lowest options, and we're seeing some bad FPS. Averages of 18, 1% lows down to 11 is not good at all. More open areas would prove to slow down the laptop to a crawl, and turning down resolution can only do so much. Gary's Mod is a failure, but when will we ever see a game that can pass on this laptop that isn't a game from the 90s? Finally, we have a game that will run alright on this laptop. We have Half-Life 2, which came out four years before this laptop did, and it runs just about. <laughs> the game is set to 1366 by 768 which is the laptop's native resolution, with the lowest settings, just like the good old days, and we are getting a pathetic average of 31 FPS with 1% lows down to 23. This may seem impressive coming from the re results that we just saw, but trust me, this is not. The game came out years before this laptop, and having it set to lowest, just to barely play above 720p, is bad, even for a laptop of this age, considering that game came out four years before and you were able to play it on PCs of that era at 1080p with some medium to high settings. 
Overall, Half-Life 2 is a pass, but just disappointing. Next up, we have the extremely optimized and light game. We have Driver Parallel Alliance, which is so optimized, it ran a laptop from 2005, which is three years older than this one. Even though this game is easy to run, we are still struggling. Even at 1366 by 768 with the lowest settings, we are barely seeing this laptop achieve a higher FPS than the straight up dumpster laptop, which was able to hit 50 FPS most of the time. But here, we are running it with averages of 32, and we're we'll going down to 19 due to some major stutters. Overall, driver is not playable at this resolution, as you would want at least 40 to 50 FPS to properly play this. On to the last benchmark. Last up, we have another game that is shockingly playable-ish. Oblivion here, which is the game that predates Skyrim, is running at 800 by 600 low settings, which isn't the lowest keep in mind, but it still isn't great. Averages of 26 and 1% lows down to 15 again due to major stutters in the frame time graph mean that the game is barely playable. Turning down the settings or resolution further will make the game look so bad, it isn't even playable in my opinion, even with the world's most FPS. Overall, Oblivion barely runs, but that does mean it is barely pass as well. On to the conclusion. Alright, so overall, how do I think about this laptop? Um, well, I mean, I did make fun of it a lot in the video because, well, I mean, you know, it's, um, it's really old and really slow and just painful to use for anything modern. But look here, it is at this point 20 years old almost, alright? It is again up there in age, so at this point it should be considered retro. In fact, I'm even surprised this can run Windows 11 at all. I mean, like, this is Pentium 4 level power here. <laughs> level of power, and so, yeah, this is just, it is just crazy that Windows 11 even wants to work on this. And it's working better than I expected. I mean, I was expecting it to just blue screen every other second. But anyways, yeah, this laptop is definitely retro at this point. And yes, it is definitely getting really, really old. At this point, I should just stop bringing it up into videos and just let it rest in peace. Alright, but anyways, guys, see you next video, alright? And remember to always sub... I'm just kidding. I faked you out there. But anyways, guys, rest in peace to Windows 10, alright? As it's dying literally today. Alright, guys, see you in the next video.